came out to be substantially less. Ours is the, uh, the yellow bar. So um, the traffic estimates vary. And, and the way it will all play out uh, will vary. So when there's, when there's a, a high degree of question about the variability of the future traffic, which determines how wide the road should be, the best thing we always recommend is to put a permanent recorder measuring device in the middle of the road that measures traffic 365 days per year on every 15-minute increment. This is a photo of a, of a group putting in the loops in the pavement, just like the ones that control your traffic signals. And they put the loop in there. They have two of them so they can measure your speed also. You hit that one, and you hit this one in a certain number of seconds, and the computer calculates, oh, they're going 45 miles an hour. But that's what they do. They saw these in, and, uh, and these, these uh, installations were twenty to $25,000. But that's a pretty small price compared to the total bridge cost and the total construction cost of everything else. But all 365 days, they measure every 15 minutes. There is no doubt about what the traffic is. Peak season or off season, somebody mentioned, is that during the peak season? Well, this is every day of the year. So we pretty strongly recommend that, they, uh, that the county work with DOT, get one of these things put at the foot of the bridge. Uh, on the south side. By the way, this is just to say, the four-laner still gets built. It's just that what it tells you is at what time do, does the does the does the traffic shift? You know, does the parking shift and so forth? Because it takes so very long to get anything permitted and designed and budgeted that that four-laner simply has to keep moving because you'll need it eventually. Nobody has said here that we don't need it. The question is, when do we actually need to use all four lanes? One way or the other, and what we hope, frankly, is that it'll be it'll be flexible depending on what part time of the year, what day of the year, and so forth. There's going to be a really complex. How did you call it? A multi-use four-laner. You had a convertible. Convertible, convertible, convertible screen. Right. So um, then we we took the traffic that we developed and we ran a um, a series of traffic engineering analysis models. Well, we took the existing two lane on the existing network, um, then we took the, the uh, future um, uh, traffic that came off of the Perdido Key plan that was emerging on the tables around us, and we ran the existing um, street system, we ran the future demand for four lanes, uh, and then we ran a hybrid system of two lane and four lane combinations. Um, so this is a, the results of that traffic simulation. Um, and this shows actually the volumes that were uh, put into the model and how they would run on the street system uh, that we have worked out uh, in conjunction with the urban designers. Now, when you, th this is a, a very easy thing to read once you reach the point of congestion where the traffic just starts backing up. Uh, each of these moving, there goes a truck, you see. <laughs> Um, well, so that's, that's the light um, You have trucks and cars moving along in the model, and that's a, a pictorial representation of what it does. Quick point. Quick point. I, I noticed you mentioned that the um, devices would only be on the south side of the bridge. Why not the north side? Because the congestion at the end of the day is tremendous. We would we would have love to have a permanent recorder at the north side and the south side in the bend by the park well, I'm just and saying the state line. We just can't okay. afford more than one. Okay, that's the problem. We, we only can afford one, so that's the optimal place to put it. Okay. Okay. Um, an interesting thing that happened this charrette is that there was a kind of skepticism of any kind of retail and. And then once they realized that what we were talking about, there was a kind of competition for the town center. Can we have it? Can we have it? Can we have it? And we, we studied all of these areas. And the ones, for example, there's one here at the, I would call it at the harbor. You know, the harbor just off of Gondora. Is that the name mm -hmm. of it? Uh, there's one at the intersection, which is up there by the Publix, which is actually in our contract. That's actually in our contract. So, you know, that, that's a given. There's the excellent intersection here. It's excellent because it's so messed up. And you know, somebody has to fix it. But it's also a good 100% corner. It's where the people who live over here come together. 
And then there, there's two opportunistic ones, that is <coughs> land owned by WCI, where there, it's the only outfit that owns land on both sides. So you can actually get, it's the only time we have a chance to get the people living in the north to have a coherent crossing to the south on the beach. So we said, that's great. And they said, go ahead and play with our land. Then there's the intersection down here on River Road, which is an obvious one, because here's where it splits. And it's actually quite a large ownership. There's quite a large chunk of the single ownership here. There's two others that we didn't study because they didn't make that much sense. And then there's the Floribama, which definitely makes sense. There's land there, there's a lot of people, they're planning to build a hotel, there's already restaurants and so forth, so that's a happening one. The question is whether it's a kind of uh, mess of single buildings with incoherent parking lots or a, or a proper town center. And so we, we, we're going to show you these. These are the ones that we designed in the dark. 